Welcome back, everybody, to episode six as we play through Crusader Kings 3 as the fictional Earl of Warwickshire. Uh, it is now 1093, and we are probably in the last days of Earl Edward, though he could surprise us. I've seen players as old as 90 characters on this game, so we could have another 40 years in us. We'll see, but it also could be at any time. Uh, if you did not see the first five episodes from last week, there is a link in the description that will take you all the way back to episode one. And with a few exceptions, like the weekend I just took off from the series, this is a daily series, so I hope you enjoy it. Let's dive into today's episode. So one of the things we're working on right now with our steward is an increase in the development rate uh, in Warwick, and that's something we probably are going to do in all of our territories. Uh, I also do, however, need to work on the level of control in our newly acquired territory of Worcestershire. Uh, so we're going to send our marshal to deal with that. Increase control in the county. We have 100 control in all the other ones, but not there. So that's something we need to work on. It's going to take three years to do it. Um, we're doing another level of development growth. It's going to take four years, though. So I think maybe what we'll do here is we'll switch over to another county. And, yeah, we just started there. So only 20 months to increase development in Northamptonshire. I think that'll do better. You can see our monthly income is now 6.2, which is fantastic. Um, monthly income while at war. Vassal tax contribution. I think we'll go there. Now we're up to 6.3. Even better. So as we are getting toward the end of our life, and we don't have a lot of piety at the moment... Um, I think it might be a good time to go on a pilgrimage to prove our dedication to God. It is going to cost every bit of the 60 gold that we currently have. But the further we travel, the more piety we will gain. Uh, so let's go ahead and prepare for the journey. It's time for me to set out on my journey to one of the holy places. But which one? I could go to Jerusalem. That would cost me a ton of money. Um, Cologne in Germany is probably the way to go. Um... We could go to the Vatican. Yeah, I think we'll go to Cologne. That's going to get crazy expensive, but that's okay. As I prepare for my journey, I know that I will travel safely under the protection of God. While I go with the Lord, my realm must wait, however long I may be gone. So I guess we probably leave our son in control of things in the meantime. Yeah, the debt will go away soon enough. I'm not too worried about that. Maybe we can ask the Pope for some more money pretty soon. Pilgrimage, love thy neighbor. Among my fellow pilgrims, there is a woman who preaches compassion and fellowship until she reaches the topic of heathens. One evening around the campfire, she loudly declares them to be abominable monsters in the eyes of God, deviants and child murderers all. Well, that's a bit harsh. Most people avert their eyes when she looks at them. Tonight, I was not quick enough. Do you not agree, O Earl? Okay. Um, I'm going to get sympathy for heathens. I don't think the way that you win people to your faith is by telling them what child murderers they are. So I'm going to, yeah, take another side on that one. She'll probably think I'm a heathen too. The arrival. I'm finally here, body and soul, at the great church of Cologne. As the bishop offers me blessings, I reflect on everything that had happened for God to bring me here at this moment in time. I've walked the holy path. 375 piety. That's huge, because right now we're only at 208. Gives me the trait Pilgrim. And because my faith has the armed pilgrimages tenet, I gained determined Pilgrim for 10 years. All right, very cool. So it didn't cost me too much, but I'm, I've gained a level of devotion because of it. Oh, and look, just as I expected. Of course, that's going to take away most of the piety that I just gained. Um, he'll give me 183 gold, though. It's actually not a bad trade-off. I still end up with more piety than I had before. But I also end up with more gold than I had before. That's a solid trade-off, I think. Thank you, uh, Pope Alexander II, who is 75 years old. Praise St. Matthew. Here comes the tax refund. <laughs> so now let's invest that money. My treasury is brimming with gold and silver. And all expenses are cared for. As a wealthy lord, I am expected to offer patronage to some kind of artist or scholar. Okay, so what do we have here? Immaculate Gardens, support of religious art. Um, I have to spend some of my prestige, that's fine. No, I have other plans for the money. 
Okay, so we're increasing our development level right now in Northampton. Let's take a look at Warwickshire for a minute. Let's go over to Birmingham. Uh, I've been hosting a chancellor for several weeks. He's helped me understand or helped me truly see the splendor of the realm under your rule. Um, okay, cool. Plus 30. What can we build here? Hunting grounds, outposts. Military camps. Okay, this would be a nice increase to our tax amount. Um, we could build that up to a large city, but it would take a lot of money. We don't have that yet. What else can we do? Upgrade the castle. We're not quite there yet. I'm just looking at all the options. I think I'll hold off and maybe save the money a little while. Christian pilgrims to the Holy Land suffer all manner of abuse, and their routes are fraught with danger. In order to protect the pilgrims and secure Jerusalem for Christ and the faithful, His Holiness Pope Alexander has accepted the possibility of an outright invasion by joint Christian forces. Deus Volt! Christian faiths now have access to crusades. So we're very soon probably going to see the Pope calling us to a crusade. We know that's something that's going to happen. It's 1095, so I'm not surprised that we're about there. Uh, I'm looking at my children, uh, and among my children, Eoflade uh, has not yet been betrothed to anyone. So let's look at some of the options that are available to us. Alliance power is obviously something I want to think about. We've got another Irish Earl that we could look at as a possibility. But I also want to think about who we might bring into our court. Uh, so let's look at maybe s skills. Oh, look at this. Marshal 22. That's fantastic. Uh, but my, what's my weak spot right now in my council? Uh, it's definitely Chancellor. So if we could find somebody who's got a good diplomacy skill and do a matrilineal marriage, maybe that's probably the way to go. Who do we got here? 21. Yeah, that might work. 37 years old. That's not ideal, and that would really hurt her in terms of her prestige, but he'll accept. All right. Let's see if we can do that. Although it won't happen until the marriage, right? Until they actually get married. But maybe wonder if we can invite him to court now. Let's take a look and see. Let's go back to Eoflade. Go to him. Now we can't invite him to court yet, but once he once we get married and get their marriage uh, to happen, then yes, we can. My spy master has come to me with grave news. While we do not yet know who, someone is plotting to kill me. It better not be one of my kids. That's all I got to say. Uh, so we've got to figure this out. The existence of a murder you scheme is exposed. So let's pause for a second. Let's take a look at intrigue. Murder you. We don't know who it is. Uh, so what we need to do right now is we need to go to our council and we need to make sure that our spy master is okay. They're all already looking at disrupt schemes, which is what we need. I think that's all we need. Okay, perfect. I had a feeling. It was going to turn out to be this way. My spy master has come to me with grave news. It is my son and heir, Edward, that is plotting to kill me. The loathsome fiend. Why am I not surprised it's my son? This was a common thing that happened um, during the reign of, I think it was Henry the... Henry the Second? Um, Richard the Lionheart and his siblings, they were always plotting to kill their father. Or at least replace their father, maybe not kill him. Uh, so what do we do here? We're going to lose 100 opinion with my son. He has abandoned the scheme. So I guess we will forgive him for now. He's a dishonorable conciliator. But that's who I'm going to play as at some point. So I kind of need to uh, keep him around. Okay. This is not good. I have gained the trait consumption. Uh, consumption was a, a term that was used for a number of illnesses, often tuberculosis. Uh, it's you know a, a bad cough that won't go away and obviously means something. Uh, a crimson stain so stark against the pale cloth. 
I dare, I stare at it in disbelief, suppressing another cough. Did it? Did I? I wipe my fingers against my lips, my hand trembling as I pull it back. I can feel the warm wetness, but I dread to look. I'm afraid you can have contracted consumption, my lord. I will treat you immediately. All right, let's hope this court physician is better than the last one. That's all I'm saying. Do no more than what is necessary. It is too late for caution. Uh, without treatment, nature takes it, its course. Okay, do no more than what is necessary. Let's take the middle ground here. All right, a little brighter. My The bloodletting turned out to be just what I needed. For now, the worst of my symptoms are alleviated and the world seems a little brighter. Excellent. Okay. Out of immediate danger. Here we go. The faithful prepare, prepare for war. Pope Alexander issues a call to arms to all righteous Christian rulers. As a Catholic Earl, I'm expected to prepare my men in support of this most holy cause, sponsored by the Universal Church itself, which is what Catholic means. Catholic means the Universal Church. Um, so, if I pledge to join the Crusade, uh, I gain 60 piety, and the War Chest receives 500 prestige and 150 piety. I will help financially... Um, Perhaps I should consider joining. We're going to kind of hedge our bets for the time being. Let's wait and see what happens. Looking at the Crusade, we can see here uh, the relative military strength. Right now, the defenders uh, have the lead. My daughter, Aelflate, is more likely to receive a good education due to Countess Sanchez's tutelage. Good job, wife. All right, so it looks like the military strength is improving for our side. I'm expected to pledge military support or donate gold. Um, all right. How much can I donate and how much will I gain? That's not a lot of piety for the amount of uh, gold that I would have to give. So, yeah, I'm pretty much going to stay out of this one. It looks like they're doing okay without me. All right. What happens if I actually pledge my support to the crusade? I will join the army of St. George. Of course, do I have to actually send troops? Oh, it launches in 13 months, 12 months. So I guess we have to actually do this. We have no beneficiary selected for the crusade. So we have to do that. All right. Jacob, my son. All right. So, yeah, he's in the the clergy. Oh, I can't because he's a monk. Okay. Another council meeting, another conflict. Chancellor Beorthelm and Suffragan Bishop Rodelgrim are arguing violently about the upcoming building projects. All right, so one of them is going to get mad uh, or find a compromise that makes everyone happy, which means no one's happy. Yeah, we'll do that. I fail to find a compromise. Oh, well. I still gain favor with both of them throughout the year, so it's not a huge deal. Still looks like we've got the advantage in numbers for the Crusade. Another stewardship perk available. Detailed ledgers. No. How about over here? Vassal levy contribution plus 20%. Excellent. All right, we finished increasing county control in Worcester. So let's take a look at our council now. Uh, go back to our marshal. He's currently organizing levies. I guess we'll go ahead and leave him on that role. And we can see here increasing development in the county. Uh, Northampton, that's about halfway done right now. It's going pretty well. The Crusade uh, begins in nine months. The numbers are looking very favorable for us right now. All right, our daughter has come of age. Let's see if she's able... I guess she would be able to get married now. That's going to get me a significantly better Chancellor available. So let's go ahead and take a look at Council now. Sorry, Reeve Beorthelm. You are out, sir. My son-in-law. I believe this is my son-in-law. That's my son-in-law. Yeah. Is going to be assigned to that position. Fantastic news. That's going to really help, I would think. Okay, here we go with the crusade. I can't choose a beneficiary because the only option I have is my son Jacob, and because he's a monk, he can't benefit. 
Uh, crusade for Jerusalem, inflamed by righteous fury and unyielding resolve, the great army of crusaders assembled by Pope Alexander sets forth to deliver divine justice. Deus Vault. All right, we need to raise our army. And off to Jerusalem they go. How do we do this? I guess we got to start by sending them to the Italian peninsula so they can organize with the rest of the Pope's army. This is going to get expensive for me, but I'm still gaining financially. Uh, even though I've raised an army, I was making so much money that I'm staying on the positive side, so that's nice. Crusades can get expensive, you know. We're finally hitting the ships. So we'll arrive well after the initial troops have gotten into place. Let's go ahead and, and reroute at least as far as the Byzantine Empire. We've got a Liberty faction against Duke Morcar. I'm going to stay out of that. We've got more important things to deal with right now. Like taking back the Holy Land. All right, as my eyes meet Duchess Mael Meads for what feels like the 20th time tonight, I know I'm not imagining things. Oh, boy. Even from the other end of the table, her gaze feels as intense as the midday sun. She wants me, and I am terrified of her, of her husband. Oh, my gosh, that's the Duke's wife. <laughs> this feels like a really bad idea. Um, yeah, my heart remains pure. It's not that I'm opposed to letting that happen in the game, just not with her. Because that could end up with war, and that could go very, very badly for me. Alright. Where is my army? I don't think we've gotten that far yet. You can see all the armies that are on their way. Mine's right behind some of the other ones. A second chance. I grew gaunt and coughed and bled. Thought I would waste away to nothing. I certainly felt that way, but I have recovered. Excellent. I lost the trait consumption. Let's go ahead and change the orders from landing there to heading to Jerusalem. How goes the war? It's going really well. We just need to get all our troops there. We've got a lot longer to travel than the defenders do. But it seems like the numbers we have, this should go pretty well. I have no idea what to make of this. <laughs> what is going on right now? The man's hairy and naked. Uh, as I retreat to my chambers for the night, I stumble upon one of my guests, Serdic, in my innermost sanctum. How did he get in here? It's not what it looks like, my lord. In fact, that he is half naked and in the process of bodily defiling my finest leather shoes... Tells me that it is, in fact, exactly what it looks like. What is happening right now? Um, I never realized you could do that. Tempting. No, no, that, no, just, no. All right, imprison the guy. Send him to the du dungeon and gain some piety. We're up to 900 in piety now. I No, shoes, come on, man. Who even wrote that into the game? That's weird. Funny, but weird. Okay, it looks like we're landing here in the desert. Is that Parana? Parama. And I guess we're going to probably attack from there. You can see the enemy's got a pretty substantial force up here. But now ours is growing as well. Yeah, it's a nice amount of men we've got. 26,000 total when they all arrive. Look at, they're just continuing to arrive. That's fantastic. All right, let's start moving our army. We'll follow where everybody else is going. My prisoner, Shurtick, has died in my dungeons. Well, good. There probably weren't any shoes there. Looks like they're going up around this way. This is just a desert, impassable terrain. So it's either attack straight from here, up into Gaza, or go around this way. And that seems to be what we're doing, is going around that way. Although, you know what? We could go this way and just kind of catch up to everybody. Here comes his big army. Yeah, we'll go this way. Looks like some others are following me in that. 
Uh, another stewardship perk. Soon forgiven. Chains of loyalty. Let's do that. I may regret this because that pretty powerful army is uh, owning our forces because we didn't have ours put together properly. We need these guys to come help me out, but it looks like they're not going to, which means this guy's going to turn on me unless help comes really, really quickly. Hurry up, guys. Get there and help me out. I'm kind of taking the lead here, but I'm going to pay for it if they don't send help. Are they leaving? What's going on? We're leaving. Worst run war ever. The crusade's going terribly right now. We have twice as many men as them. I'm successfully laying siege to Gaza. Help out. Oh, they're going to go up here now. If this guy sends his army to hit me, I'm so screwed. But I think he's going to go pursue the larger armies. No, he's coming straight here. Run away! Oh, I got destroyed. Thanks a lot, folks. Thanks a lot. Allied combatants slain. So Reeve, a venerator of Kidderminster and Onlaf, a commoner, were slain during the Battle of Gaza. So we, we are losing people. Uh, Onlaf, who was he to me? That wasn't my marshal, was he? I think that was my marshal. Uh, okay, my marshal was killed in that battle. What a disaster. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. My army was destroyed. I now have six men. Ugh. What a disaster. Well, our income continues to stay down for a while because we're building our men-at-arms um, back to full strength. But once that finishes, once these guys are all maxed out, then we should get back up to a nice income around 9 or 10. Uh, in the meantime, we've got 470 gold. I'm 58 years old, so living a nice long life. I'm looking to see where we might build. I think we've got some empty holdings over here. We can construct a city or a temple. I think we're going to go with a city here. Well, my daughter Anna has come of age. They grow up so fast. Let's take a look at her for a second. That is my youngest, who's now 16, and she can, in fact, marry. Uh, the heir to the earldom of Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire, and the bishopric of Sherwood. Excellent news. Um, I'd love for that to be matrilineal, but we don't have a choice on that one. But that's good uh, as far as alliances go and as far as the possibilities of claims down the road through cousins. So let's take a look at our family tree now. The dynasty tree. It's starting to get a little bigger. Uh, we've got two grandchildren, Edward, who will one day inherit all my realms. He's 13 now. Uh, Rachel, my daughter, who's 10. No other grandchildren. No, no, Elizabeth. Uh, so I have a granddaughter over in Ireland who is actually uh, heir to the Earldom of Desmond. So that's cool. Uh, the others haven't had children yet. Jacob, of course, is a monk, so he will not have children. Well, I've earned a lot of piety lately, so let's go ahead and spend some more to get some gold from the Pope. It's a nice steady stream. We have a new Pope, Clemens III. He's 49 years old. Uh, the... Crusade continues to go not real well, but it's better than it was. Uh, you can see that here. 26,000 men total. Look at all those different troops uh, that are out there. And uh, 11,000 on the defensive side. Let's see what kind of territory is being held right now. Very little, actually. The Byzantine Empire controls all of this right here. A little land here. There are more troops that are coming. And there is a major siege going on. The Siege of Erbid. Five days left. Let's unpause. See what happens. Excellent. They're going for Jerusalem. Boy, that could get interesting if they can take Jerusalem. Wish I was there for that, but somebody got my army wiped out. Seems like it's going pretty well at the moment. 
Ah, Aelflaed has given birth to a son. Since the little one is part of the Greenhill dynasty, he should be blessed with a good name. So um, because this is a matrilineal marriage, I get some more power over this. Uh, how about after an ancestor? Oh, we've got ancestors on his side too. That's right. Um, a good Catholic name. Paul. Jordan. Isaac. Isaac works. All right, we'll go Isaac. All right, this battle's not going so well for the attackers, which is the uh, the enemy. So that's a win. The Crusade's going really well now. War scores up to 43%. Wait till Jerusalem falls. I think the war would probably be over at that point. And we'll probably wrap this episode up once that happens. Let's wait and see if Jerusalem falls to the Crusaders. Well, that was really weird. They were like days away from capturing Jerusalem and the armies marched off to go fight a battle. Uh, and now they're back, but now the siege is going to start over again. And there they go again. I really don't know what's going on, because they could win this war if they take Jerusalem. It's at 73%. There we go. We've got another stewardship perk, so let's deal with that while we're waiting for this to unfold. Uh, soon forgiven, likable. Alright. Vassal opinion, that's good. All right, the more troops get in here, the quicker this is going to go. Leather-bound secrets. My contacts have sent me a tome written in some strange code. It's leather covers decorated with my master's symbols. Um, gains a secret, which... Um, yeah, I think we'll go for the gold. We're back up to 471 again. That's awesome. All right. Well, as we wait for Jerusalem to fall, something ugly happened in here. Earl or peasant, high or low, it does not matter. In the end, we are all mortals. I was reminded of this as I woke coughing in the morning hours. A dull ache pounded through my head and throat. Send for the physician. All I want is to stay in bed. Uh, either way, we're going to... Oh, we don't have a court physician right now? What happened to my court physician? Oh, well. I may die. They keep fighting, but it looks like Jerusalem's about to fall. Finally, my servants have found some people. Um, yeah, can we go for the expensive one, please? We know how that went last time. Time for treatment. Do no more than what is necessary. If I die, I die. A little brighter. Excellent. Ah, oh, we're ten days, six days. Jerusalem is going to fall. There it is. Oh, it's 93%. That wasn't enough to win the crusade. They just need to pursue the enemy now and defeat him in battle, and I think that'll do it. Uh, focused reading or 100 in piety? Focused reading it is. I want to see this crusade one out before we finish up here. Alright, so he tried to lay siege to Jerusalem. Our armies returned. Uh, every army is concentrating right now on returning to Jerusalem. And I think, oh, that didn't change anything. Wow, I expected it would. I am 60 years old now. The family continues to grow. You can see here little Isaac. Uh, we've got Gormlaith. Oh, Anna's had a child now, Lucy. So I've got five grandchildren. Very cool. Lucy is currently, uh, I guess she's not the heir to anything, nor is Isaac. That's okay. All right, there it is. St. George has granted King Prendanta victory in the crusade for Jerusalem after de defeating Alam and his heathen warriors on several occasions. Our warriors forced the enemies of the faith to admit their ignominious defeat. We now occupy the Holy Land. We have a king in Jerusalem, King Prendanta. He's part of uh, the house of Seolek uh, Svizboden. I don't know where that is, but Eastern Europe somewhere. So there it is. Gained a level of fame. Why? Because we were a part of the cru uh, crusade, I guess. Fantastic. So we're going to wrap it up right there. 
that's a good place to stop. A lot happened. I am still alive at 61. We have grandchildren now. Our legacy continues. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Please don't forget to hit that like button, and we'll see you again tomorrow with the next episode. Thanks for watching.